from County College of Morris. This is CCM All Access. Hello and welcome to CCM All Access, the show that brings you news and information from the County College of Morris. Students at CCM, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm Dan Giordano, and joining us today is Professor J.R. Bale, who teaches in the business department here at CCM. Welcome, Professor. Thank you for having me. So first off, you're, as we mentioned, a professor here at CCM. So mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit more about what you do? Well, I teach a variety of business courses, intro to business, um, human relations, but mostly marketing courses, mm -hmm. marketing one, two, advertising, social media, that sort of thing. Right. And how long have you been here at CCM? Since uh, 2012. So I guess that's eight years. Eight years. So it's been uh, quite a while. Actually, my, uh, I got introduced to CCM by my son, who actually became a student here through the Challenger program. Okay. And, uh, yep. Which was which was kind of cool. Get, the Challenger program gives uh, high school kids the chance to get a taste of, of college life. And right. So, in fact, when they, I got the call to come teach. I thought they were calling about my son. Yeah. So it was sort of this interesting coincidence. We came at the same time. Right. So, um, and actually, I've come to appreciate that program as a uh, professor because mm -hmm. the students who participate in it are usually very energized, very engaged. So I, I enjoy that. With the Challenger program? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's for high school students, right? Mm -hmm. So how, you know, maybe if someone is halfway through their high school career, they're thinking about school, can you tell me a little bit more about how someone would get involved with the Challenger program at CCM? I'm not really uh, an expert on that yeah. part. Uh, I just sort of deal with the students once they've come, but I'm right. sure if you're in Morris County and you're if you're a high school student mm -hmm. who's interested in that, you know, speak to your guidance counselor, right. I would guess or maybe contact uh, CCM directly. Right. So that would probably be the, the best way mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, again, I, I don't administer that at of all. Of course, yeah. But, uh, but I certainly enjoy the students that come through that program. Right. How have you found teaching uh, you know, the students that come through that program and then other just more general people that are actually here for school? I, I, I find the students at CCM are, are generally engaged, yeah. and that's what I really look for, because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it can be a very difficult job you know, dealing with people who are not engaged. Uh, but generally the quality of students are very good mm -hmm. and uh, you know challenger ones are great right. a lot of other students you know occasionally you have some students who are not as engaged but you know that's the nature of the job of course so. of course so you mentioned that you're primarily a professor of marketing mm -hmm. and then you teach some other some other types of classes mm -hmm. um, so how did you get into uh, marketing specifically at CCM uh, how did I get into? How did you? How did you decide to get into teaching marketing as opposed to some other forms of business? Well, it's uh, what I had worked at. Yeah. Uh, I had worked. I've worked at several pharmaceutical companies, um, and it were in their marketing areas. Right. I, I became later became a consultant, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly doing dealing with marketing and you know, helping my clients market their products or services or right. whatever it is that they're trying to promote. Right. And so. Uh, that seemed a natural thing for me to teach. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've taught a lot of other classes yeah. too, but uh, that seems to be my, my favorite where I, I, I do my best work. Right, absolutely. So then what motivates you and as a professor while you're, while you're doing this? So what, what do you enjoy about, about teaching? Well, I think the interaction with students, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as they're discovering things, because everything is connected to business. You know, right. if you want to paint a picture, you have to yeah. go buy art supplies. Mm -hmm. Well, who makes those art supplies? You know, how do they get delivered to the arts store? Right. You know, if you want to look at the stars, you have to buy a telescope, you know. And the same thing, who makes the telescope? How does it get delivered? Uh, basically, when you're looking at economics and marketing, you're looking mm -hmm. at mostly how our society works for the most part. Right. Most of our interactions are economic. Mm -hmm. so. That makes sense. So basically, it's it's such an integrated and connected subject with most things in life. Yes, I mean in marketing, we're talking about economics. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about finance, certainly budgeting. Right. Um, you know, it all it all comes together. Mm -hmm. we, we we kind of divide it for the purposes of teaching. We divide it into a lot of different, uh, you know, classes and buckets. But for the most part, it, there's a lot of uh, overflow. Right. 
And do you have a specific type of teaching philosophy that you like to use in the classroom? Uh, I'm a big believer in group projects. Yeah. Um, a lot of students aren't um, <clears throat> because they don't necessarily want to uh, depend upon other students. But right. when you're in the workplace, you need to depend upon other, other people. And not everyone is always going to be dependable. Right. And uh, I've had students complain, oh, well, this person's not holding their weight or this person isn't doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, how would you handle that? Right. They want me to handle it. And I'll occasionally step in, but for the most part, I want them to, to handle, the, handle it themselves because that's what you have to do in the workplace. Right. I mean, we can accomplish very little by ourselves, but when we work uh, together, we can accomplish a lot. And that's what I want them to learn in the group project. Right. So. I've heard that actually talked about a little bit more recently is, is how at school a lot of times you're focused individually on you know, your, own, your own work mm -hmm. and then there's a transition period when you're actually in a career path because there's so much more collaboration that has to go on. Do you have any, um, any advice then for, for students or young people that haven't quite reached that, that point where they're actually in, in their, on their career path? Um, for how to how to begin working on collaboration a little bit a little bit more um, with ease. Well, I, I don't know if there's any formula. You mm -hmm. just have to do it. I right. mean, we collaborate out of need. Right. And uh, you know, when the professor assigns a, a group project, you need to do it. When you're in the workplace, you'll need to do it. It's, right. it's not. I don't know if there's any, you know, great formula. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly you have to have the. Uh, the personal, interpersonal skills yeah. uh, to develop those. I mean, sometimes we're not always the easiest people to get away, along with. Right. So you have to learn how do you interact with somebody who, you know, not warm and fuzzy. Right. And, and you'll find out in the workplace there's a lot of people who aren't warm and fuzzy and uh, they demand things of you and you've, you've got to do it. Right. So. I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure you get to really get up close as uh, students are learning and going through this, this initial, this initial mm -hmm. phase. Um, so are there any specific projects then um, that you really enjoy doing with the students or anything that's coming up that? Well, there's, there's one assignment I, I like to give. It's, uh, I call it the ice cream project. Mm -hmm. it, I like it already. Uh, <laughs> well, most people like ice cream. Yeah. Uh, but I, I create a scenario where it's not going to be straightforward. Right. Um, it's, I give them a client who has uh, just bought a factory but has no distribution, has no brand, yeah. has no nothing, and doesn't even have enough capacity to go head to head with the major brands. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you do? Um, and it challenges them a little bit because they all say, well, we'll just go into the supermarkets. Well, your competitors are going to keep you out of the supermarkets. Right. So then you have to be creative. How can you deliver ice cream to consumers with going around the usual channels? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, that's, and that's when they have to be creative and try to find solutions that are you know, outside the box. Right. And um, it, it's a little difficult for them, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the same problem that a lot of companies face. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a bias when we teach uh, that we tend to talk about leading brands, you know, Coca-Cola, Nike, McDonald's, yeah. Apple. The big ones. The big ones, because they're, they're recognizable. Mm -hmm. It's easy to talk about them, but not everyone is actually going to um, be working for those companies or those those big brands. Right. So when you don't have the advantage of those big brands, it, 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 what do you do? Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to stress in those projects. Right. So that sounds that sounds like a really worthwhile thing. Um, so you've been teaching here at CCM for a good a good amount of time now, um, and in the business uh, department. I'm sure you work with a lot of students with uh, helping them as they're deciding their next steps moving forward. Uh, so do you have any advice specifically for students coming in in the business department, the business field for um, how to really make the most of their time at CCM? Um, I would say one thing, I mean, there's a lot of great advice you can give, but right. I, I would say one thing is to be curious. Mm -hmm. Be curious about things that are not necessarily always the most obvious things to be right. curious about. Uh, a lot of problems get solved by something that seems unrelated. Right. Uh, I mean, I, th I think, uh, give you an example. Uh, at one point uh, when I was working at Merck, we had to 
Uh, we were given a, uh, we're launching a new product. We were given some packaging to, uh, uh, to lo look at. We decided on a particular prototype that was going to be it. And we wanted to send it out for market research. Right. And to do that, uh, we had to make new packages. And the director of our department said, okay, what do we have to do? And somebody else said, oh, well, we'll just get the agency to do it. It'll cost $15,000. That's crazy. And I'm thinking, $15,000 for 12 cardboard packages. And I just remembered learning something about sheet metal design. I have no interest in it, but I learned a little something about it. And I said, well, give me a shot. And I'll, I went to an art supply store, and I cut and scored a bunch of card, cardboard. Mm -hmm. And I saved the company $15,000. Wow. Well, actually, thirty thousand because they lost all the samples I made. Really? So they had to do it all over again. But uh, and that's now thirty thousand dollars. We get to do work, use towards other projects. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody would have thought about sheet metal design, you know, as a, as a solution to this problem. Right. Not at so, all. And uh, there are a lot of so I say, be curious. Be curious of just about anything that even slightly interests you, because you can often bring it in to uh, help. I mean. One thing I would encourage people to be curious about yeah. now is something, uh, 3D printing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's becoming big. It's becoming big, but also it has the potential to really be a technology that uh, pushes other things aside, to disrupt the market. Because imagine if you had a 3D printer at home and all you had to do was download the design for a product. Right. And they're talking about 3D printing clothing mm -hmm. and, and other things. I mean, right now it's not near anywhere near that point, but it could develop into an amazing technology. Right. And, and people are using that technology already. Um, somebody was telling me about um, 3D printing stem cells. Um, there was this one gentleman who had a, was missing the outer part of the ear. Right. They scanned his other ear, reversed the file, and then were developed, broke stem cells along that using 3D printing technology. He actually did it? They actually did it, and then That's they crazy. surgeons uh, sewed it on the other side of his head. Um, wow. You know, and there's a lot of really interesting things going on mm -hmm. out there. But if you're only looking at what's going on in business classes, right. it's somewhat limiting. Because, uh, I mean, everything's connected to business. Yeah. Business is worth studying, definitely. Right. Um, but you have to be curious about other stuff. Mm -hmm. And you find, and you can be, cre and creativity is not about artistry, it's about problem solving. Right. So. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Um, well, I, I, when I do talk about creativity, people, uh, I, as I say, get confused with artistry yeah. and, uh, and trying to think of Designing an things, right. Designing things, uh, just uh, finding a different way to solve a problem, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's uh, doing it yourself or outsourcing it. Um, there's no there's no one way to solve a problem. There's always multiple options. You just have to figure out which is the best. Mm -hmm. And you, you think outside the box. And I do, in my classes, do some creativity exercises um, that don't seem to have anything to do with business. But when they get out to the ice cream project, then they start to think, oh, yeah, I can do things in a different way. I don't have to go to the supermarket. Right. I can maybe sell them on the street. Maybe mm -hmm. I can sell it online. You know, um, and obviously, that has its other problems. How do you? How do you deliver ice cream without right. it melting? Right. But they start thinking in that way, and it's a different way of thinking mm -hmm. uh, than the, the than the traditional uh, way. Right. And I've come across, you know, in my career executives who some are very creative, have amazing ideas, and others who all they can do is con well, their big contribution to any discussion is, well, in my old company we did that, you know, and that's maybe not the best. Well, and, and yeah. that's, not, that's not a bad contribution, but if that's all you can bring, mm -hmm. it's somewhat limiting. Right. So I try to get students to think about how can they solve problems in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, because while we talk about theory, yeah. uh, ultimately we're selling practical things, practical mm -hmm. services, goods, that sort of thing, and you have to be aware of that. Right. So. And the nice thing about curiosity and creativity is that you don't have to be born with the skill. You know, it's something that you can learn and you can work on. Yeah, it, it's like any other skill. You can acquire it. Right. Um, you know, creativity is about synthesizing, putting things together that weren't together before. You know, you look at people like Steve Jobs. He thought differently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it shouldn't be a beige box. It should be something different. Right. Um, let's take music and put it in a computer. We'll put it in a, a little device, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. 
Right. That's where the innovations come from, from right. creativity, different problems being solved in different ways. Right. So. Well, thank you so much. We're now going to take a quick break. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in a moment. I'm Andrea Lucia, a graduate of County College of Morris. At CCM, I gained a high-quality education, was involved with clubs on campus, and performed university research in tissue engineering. My CCM education prepared me for ongoing success. Today, I am at Cornell University, studying engineering and performing research in cardiac tissue engineering. The professors and staff at CCM helped me to start right and finish strong. And we're back on CCM All Access. I'm Dan Giordano, and we're here with Professor J.R. Bale. Professor, again, welcome. Thank you. So we mentioned very briefly a little bit about some other things that you've done before you were a professor here at CCM. Um, so I'd just like to touch back on that a little bit more and ask you what else you've done in your career path to lead you to this point. Well, my career is a little bit uh, circuitous, uh, or is it serpentine? I don't know. Uh, I actually started out as a f commercial photographer. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, got a couple degrees in photography up at uh, RIT in Rochester. Yeah. And I, first I wanted to be a photojournalist, then a fashion photographer, then an advertising photographer. And I actually had a studio in Manhattan. Really? Um, for a number of years. I had a few good clients. I had uh, uh, Macy's and uh, BASF and Citibank. Uh, and there were some great months and some other months not so right. great. Um, and then two things happened that uh, kind of put me on a different trajectory. One was uh, there was a lot of consolidation in the advertising industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, agencies were merging. Um, People were moving around. It was hard to build relationships. Right. Um, I had one situation. I was I called this one agency that I was trying to get work from. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Dancer Fitzgerald and Sample. It was in the Chrysler Building, which is kind of a cool place. That is really cool. And I called them up. I hadn't called them up in a few months, and I called them up, and the woman answered, uh, Dancer Fitzgerald and Sample, Compton and Compton, Saatchi and Saatchi, Dorland Worldwide. May I help you? I can imagine that she was trying to read yeah. this off. Every time she had to answer, you say know, that ten say times that. fast. And uh, it was just very difficult to maintain relationships. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I was interested, there was a woman I had met who I was interested in maybe marrying. And, and I realized that I would want a little bit more stability right. in my life. So I, it's a big deal. I went for corporate cover, and I worked for Hoffman LaRoche in their photographic imaging department. Okay. And, uh, and then after that, I, uh, I moved over to Merck, which at the time was the number one pharmaceutical company in the world. So that was kind of a cool wow, thing. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, as a photographer? As a photographer. Yeah. And I was led, I was under the impression, it was maybe a miscommunication, that they wanted me to build a photographic department. Mm -hmm. And it turns out they didn't, they, didn't really, they didn't really understand what that meant. Uh, it was still a good job, mm -hmm. still a good company, but um, I realized I had to change. I had, I, I was in a box now. So what because I Because it was corporate? Yeah, I mean, I was, when I was at Roche, I was with a lot of other people who were, had similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Now I was in an environment where I was the only one with my background. And so I kind of expanded my, my skills. I worked a little graphic design. Okay. And um, I also learned about uh, video production. Mm -hmm. But I was still kind of, I, I built a bigger box for myself, but it was still a box. Right. So then I realized I had to do something. Uh, if I was going to move up, I had to do something a little bit shocking. And uh, so I, I went for uh, my MBA at Rutgers. Okay. And uh, that actually shocked people. And they said, well, why are you doing that? And I said, well, because I want to move up. I'm, I'm interested in marketing. Right. And, uh, and within a couple semesters of my just going back to school, mm -hmm. um, an opportunity came up, and I got to manage a, uh, a become the promotional services manager for U.S. operations. Wow, okay. Um, it wasn't the biggest job. I, I, yeah. had a, I had a $23 million budget, though, which was, for me, huge. For you, got, Merck, you had to manage that. I had to manage that. Wow. And for Merck, it's not that much. Yeah. For me, it was more. And I learned I an learned enormous amount. Mm -hmm. I, I learned about, now I had to deal with ad agencies, but from the client side, which was very weird. Because I was previously the vendor. Now I'm the client. Right. And that was a different perspective. I learned a lot about uh, trade shows. And trade shows are enormously important. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think sometimes overlooked, th their importance is overlooked, but I learned how to manage those. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one of the things I do sometimes now that I'm a consultant is teach people how to work a trade show. Right. Uh, people make a lot of mistakes in, the, in, in working those. Why are they uh, so important, if I may ask? Well, it's where shows. industry people can get together, mm -hmm. uh, customers uh, can come and see, can compare, right. and can go back and forth and ask questions. It's um, also, if you, if you want a job, mm -hmm. You can possibly meet with people, and I, I've seen partnerships develop between different companies at trade shows. Interesting. It's it's it's, it's a great experience, mm -hmm. and I I'm trying to figure out how to get students to into trade shows. Um, that would be interesting. And um, but it depends upon what they're interested in. Uh, but that gave me an enormous amount of experience, and I did that for a few years. Right. And then I uh, I got promoted upstairs to global marketing where I had some experience there already, but uh, now I'm dealing with campaigns that have to be, uh, fit multiple markets. Mm -hmm. So I do a campaign that might work, have to work in Argentina, but yeah. also in Algeria. Uh, they have to be adapted, right. obviously more than just a language. Right. And uh, so that, that was an interesting challenge. And I got to right. do a lot of traveling uh, and for that as well. So that was, uh, working at Merck was a, a great mm -hmm. experience. There's a lot of research I would imagine that would be involved with creating campaigns for completely different cultures. Um, yes, but I mean, what a lot of what we did is we create the platform and mm -hmm. let the local units adapt them. I see. Giving them resources um, because some smaller markets they just don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it might be giving them the photography and the graphic design. It might be just giving them the strategy. Um, so that's you know. That was I see. A, a great experience. Yeah, and uh, and then one day um, we got a new uh, we had a divisional president who had a great idea yeah. to spin our division off and merge it with a, a division from another company, uh, Roan Meru. Okay. So now we're in a company called Mariel, half owned by Merck, half owned by uh, Roan Meru. Uh, now mixing two dif different corporate cultures and national cultures. Right. And that was another great experience. And those are both pharmaceutical companies. Both pharmaceutical yeah. companies, and we were animal health, uh, you know, a specialized area. And um, then we got a new CEO for Marielle, and he decided to sh shut down the New Jersey office and move down to Atlanta. Okay. And, um, and I was offered, you know, a position down. Very, they actually worked very hard to get a lot of us to go down. I would imagine, but yeah. I find it hard to be a Yankees fan in Atlanta. You know, it's just very difficult. But also for personal yep. reasons. Yep. Um, I have family, I had, uh, elderly parents and uh, in-laws, and so that that made it difficult. Mm -hmm. So so I became a consultant, and I did go down to Atlanta as a consultant. I see. And uh, and I found other clients, and that w that was very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but then in 2002, we had a recession, just a shallow one, but yep. I could feel it. And uh, I decided I need to supplement my income a little bit, so mm -hmm. I decided to try teaching. Okay. And uh, and I really liked it. I really liked working with students. I said, yeah, this is something I could do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I teach as an adjunct, but I still do consulting. And uh, uh, so you know, it's it's the best of both worlds. Right. So and I get to I get to bring lessons, real life lessons from my consulting, into the classroom. Right. And uh, and that's. That's a great thing because we have some great textbooks, other great resources, but I think it helps if I can make it real for the students. Mm -hmm. So, and um, and I've been beyond that. I've been I've started to write some books, and that's been sort of an exciting new uh, new thing for me. Right. And uh, I see I see you brought them here for us today. Yeah. Um, this was uh, Phoenix in the Middle Road, which was my first novel. Yeah. And. Uh, it was a political novel, and then Cognition Chronicles, which is a uh, science fiction, and it's just something to do in my spare time. Yeah, but right. It. I also, in doing it, I've met a lot of other authors and realized they were not particularly good at marketing their books, and so I've added to my practice, mar my marketing, my uh, marketing consulting practice, uh, helping authors market their books, mm -hmm. and because that's an industry that is changing a whole lot. There are millions of books out there. Yeah, and. Um, Authors are now expected to be part of the marketing effort to mm -hmm. help with the branding, you know, and they have to have social media platforms, right. they have to have websites, uh, they have to develop strategy. Uh, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're J.K. Rowling or Stephen King 
you know, probably don't have to work as hard on that, but a lot of others do. So I sorry from scratch. Yeah, they have to start. But also, if they want to get uh, have their book taken by a publishing company, mm -hmm. uh, the publishing company said looks at well, do you already have a following? Do you already have you know a branding, a platform is, is the term that you like to use. Yeah. So that uh, that's something I've sort of uh, been helping people with. Is getting a little bit more of a platform, a little bit more branding under their belt as authors? Yeah, helping them do that. Uh, sometimes it's it's maybe tactical things like helping them with a website or giving them help, uh, you know, getting a book cover. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll design a, I sometimes can dip into my old set of skills and yeah. develop a book cover for them. Um, but sometimes just giving them advice. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, and developing maybe some more distribution methods. One thing I do is I also manage a, a, a book festival, the New Providence Book Festival. Okay. And that yeah. gives an opportunity for, for authors to come in and um, kind of like the trade shows. Like it, like a trade show. Yeah. Uh, only it's more consumer oriented. Mm -hmm. And we actually partner with a local museum, a uh, historical society, and uh, it's it's actually a, a salt box house from the 1800s. Oh, nice. And they, they have tours. Yeah. But they also have this property on the side that we set up the festival on, and uh, it's sort of a it's a nice synergy. Right. More people come to the museum, and then more people also come to you know. It's to a win-win to, solution. To wit, to, to meet the authors yeah. and. And the authors like it. They get to sign their books and talk to readers. And, um, so that's been kind of a, uh, a fun thing to do. Right. So that's, I'm starting to notice a theme in that everything that you've done, even though it's been, you know, you've had a few different types of careers, they all connect and interweave with each other. They all do. It's, it's, it's every step you take in your life, mm -hmm. you get a new set of skills to put in your toolbox. Right. And you can always take those tools out. I mean, sometimes some skills you acquire may not be useful in the future, but right. uh, most of them are in some way. Mm -hmm. At least they give you a different perspective on things, and I think that's important uh, for the students, for, for for an author, for a marketer, yeah. for anyone. Yeah, so. absolutely. So do you have any advice then for students on how to maybe find find their niche or find I know the purpose is like a pretty big word, but find something that they really enjoy doing. I think especially as business students, some of them are pretty undecided as to what they really want to do. Well, I would say this goes back to what I may have said earlier about being curious. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, try things out. out right. You know, uh, also as you get into the workplace, you're exposed to things, uh, and that that will give you some idea. You know, what do you like to do? What do you not like to do? Um, obviously, you want to make a living, mm -hmm. but you also want to live a life, right? And you want to balance those two things. Um, right. I mean, I've known people who have worked very hard, but they have no fun in their life. They don't enjoy their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, somebody—I forget—somebody made this wonderful comment about uh, your tombstone. You know, there's there's your date, your yeah. birth date, your death date, and then that that dash in between. What does that dash represent? What did you do during your time on Earth? And, uh, That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, and yeah. obviously we have to make a living, but also what do we leave behind? What did we do? Uh, maybe we don't leave anything behind, but we, we touched other people. Right. Uh, we helped a, bu a business rise mm -hmm. or, or something. Right. And uh, that's just a matter of reaching out and figuring out what you like to do, mm -hmm. what fulfills you, um, hopefully something that also will bring you some uh, financial compensation, right? Absolutely, uh, and and certainly you have to pay attention to that too. Uh, you know, it's it's not all it's not all fun. It's not all go do what you want to do. It has to it has to pay off in some way, right? Because you have to be secure, right? So. You have to provide for your family, absolutely. If that's the case, yeah. but you're a much I'm a much happier father mm -hmm. to my family to my children, uh, and that makes me a better father. Right. If I was miserable all the time. Uh, then I wouldn't be as good a father. I wouldn't be as good a husband. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how well I've done in those areas, but right. I, I'm better for for having done these things. Right. So. Lots of respect to you for for being able to. You know, I'm sure it took a leap to go from say photography a little bit, you know, to to other careers like marketing. It didn't. It didn't seem much like a leap. Okay. It was just this is this is the path forward. Mm -hmm. This is what I need to do. Um, it made sense. Yeah, I mean, I think leaps are when you jump into something that's almost 
fantastic. Right. Um, you know, it's, oh, I'm going to start a winery or mm -hmm. something. I know nothing about making wine. And for me to stand up and just say, I'm going to do that, that would be a leap. Yeah, I but, see. But uh, again, it, uh, everything moving forward was based on skills I acquired along mm -hmm. the way. And I think, that's, I think that's pretty true for most people. Yeah. Um, rarely do you see somebody make just an amazing jump away from what, what they ordinarily mm -hmm. do. It's an evolution. Right. That's, that's some things I'm, I'm taking away from our conversation is, as you mentioned, being curious allows you to start learning and acquiring these skills. And then it seems like from your, from your career path, they naturally just slide right into the next thing and mm -hmm. you find purpose in, in helping people with consulting and teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, that's fantastic, that's, that's really helpful. So this has been another edition of CCM All Access. Professor JR, we really appreciate you coming on the show and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.